So today I'm going to introduce one more concept. Like this is my research part. Like whatever the research I have done on Charlotte, that research part uh, will share you. That is Charlotte life cycle. So this life cycle is totally different. Whatever I'm going to share, life cycle is totally different compared to outside life cycle. Even if you find Google or somewhere else, you can't able to find this type of life cycle. So this is totally different. So. Charlotte life cycle. Charlotte life cycle means nothing great. Charlotte means what? What is the meaning of Charlotte guys? What is the need of a Charlotte flower? So it's a class. It's not. Yeah, it's take a re request. It process the request and generate a dynamic response. And send it to server and server to front end browser, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So up to now. You are feeling it, you know, like you know, yes, it is taking request, it is processing the request, it is sending the response. Like uh, you are thinking, right? So what happens in Builtly? Like what exactly Charlotte is doing in Builtly? Like how this process is going on? Like it is taking request, processing the request, sending the response. This is what you know, right? So in between this process, what is happening in Builtly? That uh, research part will share you. So that is called as life cycle. That is called as life cycle. Okay, select so life cycle means ta from taking the request to generating the response. What happening? What's happening exactly uh, internally? That is called as select life cycle. Okay. Yep. Yes. So select life cycle is an important entry question. Can you remember? So select life cycle in the sense we'll explain you in a different manner. For suppose this is my front end browser. So I think uh, this. Like same diagram I already gave in my previous example, web application architecture as well. So if you open this web application architecture, looks like one more time we'll uh, let you know because uh, one or two guys not in the previous session, right? So first request goes to server. This is your browser. So server takes the request and uh, search for the respective web application based on the request, based on the URL pattern. So respect uh, respective web application would be. Wait, wait. Respective web application would be searched by the server. If the respective web application found and immediately it calls web.xml file to search the respective servlet based on the URL pattern. Here slash login is my URL pattern. So will it will check slash login in your in web.xml file. Yes, slash login available. So slash login was mapped with login servlet. So immediately among these many servlets, particular servlet would be called. And uh, it, it, this particular servlet, uh, servlet takes the request, generates response, and that response would be forwarded to server and server to front end browser. This is what you know up here. But what this servlet is doing in Builtly, like while generating the response, that I am going to uh, introduce under the servlet life cycle. Okay? Same thing as usual. It's like yeah. a server, it's like a browser, and. Uh, mouse is not working. This is my server. This is my server. For suppose Tomcat server. Tomcat server. Okay. So this is my front end browser. So where you deploy your web application? Where you are going to deploy your application, guys? Hello, Krishma got my point. Where you are going to deploy your web application? Web.xml. That is okay. That web.xml file and the entire web application have to deploy it somewhere. Then only it could be accessible to outside. If you want to access your application from browser, first you have to deploy that application at somewhere, right? Hmm. Yes, what is that? Web.xml. Yeah, web.xml file is having servlet configurations. But what I'm talking, web.xml means what? It's a part of web application. So if you check here, various resources need to develop for web, web, web application using servlets in the sense. First step, what you need to do, you have to develop web.xml file, and then second, uh, second one, you have to develop a servlet class. 
these two you have to develop and then need to develop need to deploy your web application in what this is called as web application so step one is called as web application development developing web.xml file and servlet class after successful development you have to deploy this application where server server that is what i am asking so what is the what is the need of for deploying this application in server if you deploy your application in server you can you can able to access that application anywhere in the world through internet yeah. so that's why it is called as web application web application means what an application which was which was recognized or which was uh, you know uh, accessible anywhere in the world through web which was accessible through web that's why it is called as web application so if it is desktop application it would be accessible up to that machine only like uh, core java applications but if any application accessible outside the world through web that is called as web application am i right or not guys say yes sir no hello hope you got it everyone yes yes so this web application we need to deploy in server yes right so this is my tomcat server tomcat is my server so where is servers you know tomcat is one of the server web logic is one of the server and different servers we have jboss glassfish websphere pramati different servers we have in outside in outside world like uh, in outside business market so currently i am using tomcat server so whatever the application you develop that application you have to deploy inside your server okay guys this is my web application yes. web application is having how many resources each each and every application is having how many resources you need to develop two resources what are those two resources for web application development i need to develop two resources in step 1 what are those two resources i am talking xml file web.xml server web.xml file and web.xml file and web.xml file okay for servlet configurations what else other than web.xml file what else hello any disturbance from my side how late yes that is what i am asking you are yes, taking five minutes of time to tell the same so web application means you have to develop two files mandatorily one is web.xml file what is the need of web.xml file this is my web uh, this is this is my web application for suppose icic and net banking web app okay so this web this web application is having two resources what are those two resources web dot xml file web dot xml file and servlet right any any number of servlets you can not only single one any number of servlets you can okay so this is web dot xml file for suppose web dot xml file so what this web.xml file is having again we we'll let you know because one or two members not available right so again we we'll let you so this is servlet for suppose login servlet this is for suppose register servlet register servlet okay so clearly remember guys like you know what i said previously again uh, i am what i said in my what i said in my previous session again i am repeating you the resources what you need to develop for any web application using servlets in the sense first one is web.xml file mandatory to write and servlet it's a class which has to be extends from http servlet class that is the second resource what you need to develop and then you have to deploy this this is called as web application development after that you have to deploy this web application inside a server after that you need to start the server and then you can able to access the application through url from your browser this is what i said so servlet preparation you have to take your any class and which has to be extends from http servlet and then you have to override service method service methods are to do get or do post right and various servers include tomcat weblogic websphere glassfish jpos this is what i said okay so what i am saying was so first you need to develop your web application and you need to deploy that web application inside tomcat server any server not tomcat server you have to deploy inside your server okay so now you have started the server 
okay now you deployed the application you started the server now you are trying to access the web application from browser anywhere in the world am i right or not so according to these steps first step was completed and you deployed the web application here and uh, the server was started the server was started you need to start the server the server also started you know already how to start the server and then fourth step is what access web application from browser through url like whenever you are trying to access whenever you are trying to access this application from your browser like this i'm giving a request to a web application so i'm giving request to live application www. icici bank icici bank.com slash login this is what url i'm giving so whenever you click on enter you are going to get some response immediately you are getting response right so what i'm saying was life cycle means whatever i'm going to introduce in this life cycle whenever you gave a request you are getting this page as response right in between this what happens internally that i'm going to introduce in this life cycle what my point everyone yes yes so whenever you gave a request to this url you are getting some response right so what happening what's happening in between like uh, giving request and uh, we are getting response right so in between this what's happening in between that i'm going to cover under this uh, re uh, sorry this uh, life cycle okay what happens you know whenever you gave a request to this particular web application here what is my url pattern http colon slash slash hello what is my url pattern guys here i'm checking from my browser right so what is the url pattern here www.https colon slash slash login http no i'm i'm asking entire url pattern entire url am i am asking hello the http dot https colon colon slash slash yes www. icicibank. dot com. After that slash login, whatever it may be, right? So this is what URL I am giving. So based on this URL, here I am giving URL to ICICI Bank. Okay, this is each and every organization is each and every application is having separate server. So ICICI Tomcat server. This was ICICI Tomcat server. Okay, so based on your URL. Based on your URL, is request would request would goes to the respective server. Here you are giving request to ICICI Bank server. So request goes to ICICI Tomcat server. So how it goes, you know, whenever you gave a request, based on your request, a socket connection would be opened between you and the respective server. So here, what is the server? ICICI Bank, ICICI Tomcat server, right? ICICI Bank Tomcat server. Because here you are mentioning clearly in your URL. www.icicibank.com so a socket connection would be established between your browser and the server that means between this browser and your icic bank server was available at somewhere that you don't know maybe it was available in hyderabad maybe it was available in us maybe it was available in uh, jaipur we don't know but through internet you are giving request here a socket connection would be established between your browser and the respective server what my point everyone any confusion yes yeah. yeah. no everyone okay so this is totally a research part can you remember so it's very important discussion so up to now you are using various web applications but what what's happening internally you don't know but after com after completion of this entire discussion you are going to get complete picture for sure i am saying so what i mean to say was whenever you gave a request between your browser and the respective server a connection would be a socket connection would be established can you remember this is a socket connection that means a medium like uh, uh, a medium would be established between you and the respective server okay so how it knows to which server i needs to uh, establish the connection based on your url the uh, to the respective server socket connection would be established what my point if you gave a request to icic bank to icic bank server request would be socket would be established if you are giving request to facebook then socket connection would be established between your browser and facebook server if you gave a request to gmail a socket connection would be established between your browser and the gmail server if you gave a request to flipkart a socket connection would be established between you and the respective flipkart server what my point guys 
hope everyone okay so everything would happens under this url pattern only hello 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 krishma hello hello yes ma'am it's audible right yeah but we, we can't uh, hear your noise properly here right everything okay from my side i have a good network as well Is it okay now? Hello. Yes, Naveen. Yes, it's okay now. Yeah. Hope it's okay. Yes. Yeah. What I mean to say finally was again I'm telling you, based on your request, based on your URL pattern only between you, between your browser and the respective uh, server, a socket connection would be established. If you gave a request to ICICI Bank, a socket connection would be established between your browser and ICICI Bank Tomcat server. If you gave a request uh, to Facebook, a socket connection would be established between you and Facebook server. If you gave a request to Gmail, a socket connection will be established between your browser and Gmail server. Hope everyone okay up to yet. Yes. Yes. So after establishing connection, so what I said previously, request goes to server. How request goes to server? You know, a request and response format would be established here. Request and response. For request, this request is having two parts. header and body okay so this is the request format guys request format in this way request would be formatted request format request format so this is header part okay and this is body part this is header part and this is body part okay so navin this is request format what this is having so whatever the request you are sending here right so this request would be saved in this particular format header means like in which from which browser you are giving the request and what is this browser version all the metadata of your browser like complete details of your browser would be available stored in this uh, stored in this header part so coming to body part what is your exact url pattern your url pattern is there right that url and if you are sending any data from your browser like here normal if you if it is login page you are going to send username and password from your browser am i right or not mm. if yeah. it is a login page you are going to send your username and password you are going to click on uh, login button that means there you are sending your some details to the server so those details would be saved in body part so slash login here it would it saves slash login for suppose okay header means header means header part means there metadata of your browser would be stored metadata of your browser would be stored okay so what happens is this request format is there right this request format would be processed like traveled this would be traveled through the socket connection whatever established to the server wait
yes so this would be traveled through this connection whatever established up to server that means finally my request to reach to what finally my request reach to what guys hello is it audible everyone yes finally my request reach to server this would be traveled through the connection up to server so finally my request reach to server kindly remember even request whatever you sent from front end that would be reach to server okay this would be reach to server finally don't confuse very simple it was whatever the discussion i am giving it is very simple okay so finally my request was available where available at which place finally my request hello 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 web.xml file no here request goes to where up to now my request is available get server so whenever you have a request the socket connection would be established between you and the browser right so request would be formatted like this and it would be traveled through the connection and reaches to server that is what i said up here i don't go with web.xml file up to now merit or not so finally my request reach to server so what the server will do you know the server takes this request and the server finds the respective web, web, web application like before slash login like for suppose icc net banking this web application name is there right so this web application name also you have to mention here in your uh, wait so before this slash login you have to mention your web application name as well so we'll mention it here slash slash icic net banking web app icic net banking web app slash login okay so this entire this entire picture would be this uh, entire details would be saved in this request format so here i am not writing entire thing because it would be not printed here because it would be overridden if i write so you are going to confuse again if i write here so before slash login in this request format icic net banking web app also stores in this request format so the server takes that request and it will search for the respective web application according to url pattern here what is here to which application you are giving request right in to which application you are trying to give request guys in this url hello to yeah. which to which application to which web application you are giving request that application you mentioned here right clearly in your url pattern icic net banking web app so the server takes the request and the server search for the icic net banking web app inside the server you already deployed this web application right yes this application was found by the server so immediately request was forwarded to the respective web application got my point so request not goes to server directly first request goes to web application server forward request to web application next so according to url pattern up to this was completed www.icicbank.com it was related to server and server to respective web application so up to this up to this up to this server 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 reach and after that icic net banking web app so the the request goes to your web application after that slash login slash login so based on this slash login the respective server would be called okay so in this web.xml file you have to write the configurations like this so if i open my previous example will open my eclipse so what web.xml file is having anybody please Servlet config. Yes, servlet configurations. Servlet type and servlet tag, servlet type and name tag, servlet type and class tag, URL pattern tag. All these things would be available under web dot xml. Same thing will paste here.
okay up to now okay right so first request goes to server through proto uh, like through socket connection whatever established so how this socket connection established you know based on this protocol http is the protocol hypertext transfer protocol based on this protocol a socket connection would be established this socket connection would be taken care by http protocol http colon slash slash you mentioned right so based on this protocol socket connection would be established that is internal architecture okay so this is what i mentioned inside my web dot web dot xml So this is what I mentioned inside my web.xml file. I think you are going to confuse. We'll remove all these things. We'll write a piece of code. So this piece of code will write. Yes, this is what code I have inside my web.xml file. Am I right or not, guys? Hello. Yeah. And one more thing. Login for you. This one first. Because I want to show you. Yes. So, so this is the code what you have inside web.xml file. <laughs> So finally, request goes to respective web application. Am I right or not? Finally, request goes to respective web application or not? Grishma. Hello. Hello. Hello, Grishma. Is it audible? Yes. Yes. Please respond, Grishma. I'm asking several times. I don't know. I don't know, but I can't hear your voice clearly. Yes. So finally, my request goes to server and server to respective web application. Okay, for a few of the second, and then it's gone. So is it okay now? Hello. Yes, Navin. Is it okay now? <coughs> yes. So finally, my request goes to respective web application. So after that, server what server will do? You know, this this slash login is there, right? So any servlet is there with slash login, it will find out by calling this web dot xml file. That means after server after request goes to web application, server reads server reads this uh, web dot xml file. So any 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 servlet configured here with slash login URL pattern. Any servlet configured here with slash login URL pattern? Check my code here. Servlet, mm -hmm. servlet name is fs. Servlet nickname. Servlet class name is login servlet. And then servlet mapping tag. Servlet name was first fs fs here. Both names has to be same. And then URL pattern is what? What is the URL pattern I configured here? What is the URL pattern I configured here? No, here I am asking. Here I am asking. Here, slash, login. slash login. So, so up to up to I C S net banking web app finished. So, finally request goes to here. After that, remaining your release one. Remaining your release one. This what I am. This is what I am asking. This is slash login, right? So this slash login, it is going to search in web.xml file. Anywhere slash login configured? Web.xml file? So if you check my entire web.xml file, anywhere you find slash login as URL pattern? Yes. 
Who oh, is it? Audible first. Wait a second, mm -hmm. What's that? This was that. This was Hello. Hello? Is it okay now? Yes. Grishma, is it okay? Yes. So, finally, your request goes to server and server to respective web application. So, up to this, your URL pattern was good. After that, slash login is the remaining URL pattern. So, this slash login, it is going to search by calling web.xml file. So, is there any URL pattern configured in web.xml file with slash login. Have you found slash login anywhere here? Yeah. Yes. So here, here slash login was available, right? So this slash login was mapped with with uh, mapped with uh, which servlet? What is the mapped servlet for this slash login URL pattern? Login servlet. So here, if you check, this slash login was login mapped servlet. with the login servlet. So login servlet is going to call finally. So the respective servlet is going to call. So after that, after that actual servlet lifecycle is going to call. So after that, like whenever the respective servlet was called, actual servlet lifecycle is going to start. Actual servlet lifecycle is going to start. This total previous one, like socket connection opening and request format like this, header part, body part. This is totally a research part one. But whatever I am going to share now. This is actually a servlet type cycle. So immediately, whenever you sur your servlet was recognized, you immediately that servlet was going to load. Servlet is going to load. Servlet is going to load means here your servlet was in Java code. This was totally a Java code, right? Like uh, public void, do get, do get method, process method, sorry, do get service method, all these things. This is totally in Java code. You have to convert it to byte level or binary level code or not? So server or machine understood which type of form, which type of code? Server understood which type of code? Which understands only byte level code, binary format code. Am I right or not? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So finally, the respective servlet, whatever recognized is going to load. That is called as servlet loading. Your servlet would be loaded first. This is, this is called as servlet loading. Krishna, I'm getting your voice. I'm getting noise from your side. Hello? I'm getting noise, like I'm getting some different no uh, voice from your side. Uh, yes. This is called a servlet loading. Servlet loading means nothing great. Your load, like whatever the servlet recognized after uh, uh, checking web.xml file, the respect to servlet was recognized, right? That respect to servlet would be loaded. That means converted to binary format. Servlet loading. This servlet would be converted to zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. Ones, zeros, ones, zeros. One, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Zero, one, zero, one, zero. Like it would be converted to binary level format. You don't know that. Only machine will understand that type of language. Okay? Up to now, okay? Yeah. 
so this is first step guys in life cycle this is first step surlet loading your surlet respect to surlet would be loaded first after that whatever the surlet loaded for that surlet object was created that is called as surlet instantiation hope you are okay everyone up to it so after that for your surlet object would be created whatever the loaded surlet for that surlet object was created that is called as surlet instantiation surlet instantiation instantiation okay hope everyone okay hello is it audible grishma everyone hello hello it's audible right clearly Yes, surlet instantiation means what? The respective surlet, whatever loaded for that surlet object was created. So the surlet is having what? Whatever the surlet code you pasted here. This code is available inside your surlet. So this is the code. I am going to write briefly inside it. yes so this is the code what you have inside your surlet so this is login surlet kindly remember this is login surlet previously in my first example this is first surlet so but here for suppose it is a login surlet this is the code what i have inside my login surlet so this do get method is called as what guys this do get method is called as what hello service method am i right or not this do get is called as service method so surlet would be instantiated after that what happens you know immediately your surlet would be initialized initialized by calling init method so this is called as surlet initialization surlet initialization immediately your surlet would be initialized this is called as surlet initialization surlet initialization means nothing great if any input data is if you if you are giving any input data to your surlet Uh, like configuration data so that is going to uh, cover under the surlet initialization that means your surlet would be initialized up to now your surlet was for your surlet object was created but not initialized so in this step your surlet was initialized by calling init method so this is in the, under this particular part init method was called init method was called so this init method is expecting one parameter that is surlet config parameter so what is this part guys surlet initialization am i right or not hello i think huge disturbance i think nobody is getting my voice right it's a very important discussion i don't know what happened today
हेलो यस आर यू ओके अप टू नाउ सो फर्स्ट योर सर्लेट वुड बी लोडेड एंड देन योर सर्लेट वुड बी इंस्टैंशिएटेड दैट मींस ऑब्जेक्ट वाज क्रिएटेड आफ्टर दैट हेलो हेलो ग्रीष्म आई एम गेटिंग ह्यूज नॉइज ग्रीष्म फ्रॉम समबडी आई डोंट नो आई डोंट नो वेदर यू आर लिसनिंग माय वॉइस और नॉट सीरियसली वेदर यू आर गेटिंग माय पॉइंट्स और नॉट आई डोंट नो बिकॉज़ इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन इफ यू गेट ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट देन आई विल फील यू नो रियली गुड I don't know if you are not giving reply whether you are getting my point or uh, getting my point or not. I don't know. That's why I'm in confusion. I can't able to go uh, to the next point actually. Now the important thing is, you are saying the whole thing can be heard only like two or two three words only. No, really, I'm saying I. your voice was really breaking like you know your voice is coming in a different manner actually like with the noise uh, noise was added to your uh, voice so i am unable to hear you actually i don't know what going on okay so we'll go with another 10 to 15 minutes okay so first your sarlet would be loaded first and then the respect to sarlet would be instantiated that means for your sarlet object was created for your sarlet object was created okay after that your sarlet would be initialized after that your sarlet would be initialized by calling init method so this is called as sarlet initialization sarlet initialization means if any uh, initial data are needed to your sarlet that would be added so under this sarlet initialization sarlet config object was created kindly remember under this sarlet initialization sarlet config object was created why because sarlet initialization means init method was called init method is expecting init method is expecting one parameter that is sarlet config so immediately sarlet config object is going to create under this particular step okay guys hello hope everyone okay this is sarlet config object yes navin yes when sarlet config object was created now your voice is clear grishma previously i got huge noise but your my uh, your voice was clear yeah, so, so i just uh, off in my laptop and continue with my phone that's why so maybe problem from your side only so previously i got i don't know noise. what's going on today okay fine no worries so when yeah. sarlet config object was created at the time of sarlet initialization am i right or not yes yes when sarlet initialization would happen after sarlet instantiation first the uh, recognized hmm. sarlet would be loaded after that for that respect to sarlet object was created after that your sarlet would be initialized by calling init method okay so at this particular hmm. time at this particular time one object was created that object is called as sarlet config object this is sarlet config object so what is this sarlet config object what are the exact advantages of this sarlet config object we'll let you know later we'll uh, discuss this sarlet config object in separate session okay so for time being just okay. remember, for time being just remember that sarlet config object was created at the time of sarlet initialization okay next mm. so after sarlet config object was created after after sarlet initialization immediately your do get method was called so for your sarlet object was created right immediately your do get method was called this object this method is going to call service method is going to call this process is called as Uh, request to processing phase sarlet loading sarlet instantiation sarlet initialization and request to processing phase this fourth step is there right this is called as request to processing phase okay yeah yes so what you what are the various parameters for this uh, do get method what are the input parameters for do get method have you observed over here if you observe here what are the parameters for your do get method Yeah, HTTP yeah. Sarlet request HTTP and response. HTTP Sarlet request, HTTP Sarlet request, and HTTP Sarlet response. Right? Response. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. immediately for these two, 
for this request and response again two objects were created so again two objects were going to create request object so when these request and response objects would be created whenever this do get method was called right yeah yes so this is request object this is response object request and this is response response object so request object and response object what this request object is having you know whatever the request data you are sending from front end that means your username your password whatever you are going to send from your browser right you are going to send from yeah. input data right so that request data would be stored here request data would be stored here okay Mm. So finally, your process, your do get method was called. In this do get method, I am going to get this request data. I am going to get this request data. I will process that, and finally, I am going to get. I am going to generate some response right here. Here, what I am doing? I am mm. getting the request. If any data is there in my request object, I am going to get that. After that, we'll do something. We'll write. We'll do some business logic. After that, we'll. I am generating some dynamic response. Am I right or not? Mm. Yes. So what? After after. taking the request data something is going to happen like some business logic is going to process after that a response would be generated that response would be stored in this response object okay so this yeah. response this this response would be stored in this response object response object dynamic response this is dynamic response right Yes. Yes. Finally, my dynamic response was generated by whom? Who is going to generate this dynamic response here? Who is doing this? Servlet. Servlet. Servlet is taking the request. This is taking the request yeah. data, processing the request data, and generating the dynamic response. Am I right or not? That is mm -hmm. the meaning of servlet or not? It is taking yes. the request request object, request data from request object. it is processing the request and it is generating dynamic response finally guys mm -hmm. this dynamic response would be forwarded to server finally forwarded to server okay yeah. okay so finally my response was forwarded to server and again what the server will do you know the server takes the request and again one format would be prepared by server here this is called as response format previously at starting your request would be formatted in the form of request format or not yeah similarly here one more format would be generated like prepared by the server that format is called as response format so in this response format again it is having header and body header and body so what this header having you know header having all the details of your server previously request format all the details of your browser am i right or not mm. here all the details of meta details of meta data of your server and whatever the dynamic response you are sending here that actual dynamic response would be stored in body part hope you are okay any confusion i am going no in depthly that's why i'm asking so again this is called as response format response format so generally this uh, like you know whatever i am telling you this nobody will tell you at outside even you can't able to find this in google as well so that's why i'm stressing more and more you can't able to find this information even in google as well really i'm saying so this is totally my personal data so finally whatever the response you are sending here that response would be reach to server and server prepares one more format that is response format having header and body parts so this body part is having actually your dynamic response so this dynamic response would be shared to socket connection that means it would be traveled through socket connection up to what up to your front end browser so it goes to socket connection like uh, the socket whatever open and it is traveled through your browser up to your browser it would be traveled up to your browser it would be traveled up to your browser it would be traveled and finally reaches to your browser it would be reaches to your browser 
and finally the respo respect to response would be generated here finally you are going to get some response here what is the response you are going to get this is the response what you are going to get so here page is there right this is the response what you are going to get we'll print screen it I'm 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 sh doing like I'm changing it to a very small image because it was not displayed in my browser right here. So finally, this is the response what you are getting. Am I right or not? This is the page what you are getting in response. Right, guys? Hello. Yep. Yes. So finally, you are getting this page yes, as response or not? Finally, you are getting this page as response or not? Even in live as well. Yes. I'm going yeah. to in live yeah. as well. Slash login. Please see check it once. So slash login. So same response you are getting or not? So same response I'm going to yeah. get here practically. So this is entire life cycle of a servlet. Now you got the complete picture what is going to happen in Milti whenever you gave a request to the particular web application. Like Facebook, yes. like Gmail, like ICC net banking, like SBA net banking. Like whatever it may be so this is what happening so again i'm going to introduce one more time each and every point i'm going to tell you one more time so and one more thing i forgot to uh, tell you so after successfully getting the response immediately this re re uh, whatever the objects are created right what uh, some objects are going to uh, created right so all those objects will be de-instantiated that means removed so this request object will be removed this response object would be removed this select config object is going to remove that means all objects would be deleted, removed. That is called a surlet deinstantiation. So at this surlet deinstantiation, destroy method would be called destroy method. So what are the various methods I called here? First init method at surlet initialization. After that do get method, service method. After that destroy method after getting the response. Am I right or not? Mm. Yes, destroy method means your surlet, whatever the surlet, uh, uh, whatever the surlet instantiated, right? That surlet also going to destroy. I calling destroy method. That means this object also going to destroy. So config object destroy, surlet object was uh, destroyed, and request object was destroyed, response object was destroyed finally. Okay, guys. All yes. objects would be removed finally because after successful getting the response, I got the response successfully. So what is the need of maintaining all these objects? Is there any need? Tell me, guys. Is there any need? No. No. That's why all those no. would be removed by calling destroy method. Okay. So again, I'm telling you clearly. I'm telling you guys kindly remember, kindly listen carefully. So first, you are going to give the request based on the request. A socket connection would be established between your browser and the respective server. If you gave a request to ICIC bank application, if you gave a request to ICIC bank application, a socket connection would be established between your browser and ICIC bank server. If you gave a request to Facebook application, a socket connection would be established between your browser and Facebook server. So here I am giving request to which server? To which application here I am giving request? ICIC net banking. ICIC net banking. So immediately a socket connection would be established between your browser and ICIC bank server, ICIC Comcat server. So this yeah. connection would be established through which using which using this protocol HTTP protocol after that after that whatever the request you are giving that would be formatted in request format that is having header and body part header is having all the metadata of your browser what you are using Google Chrome Google Chrome version all the details cookies details all this would be available and body is having actually your request data if you are sending username password details all these details would be saved in body part okay yeah yeah, that would be traveled. That request format would be traveled through protocol, through socket connection, whatever established up to the server. Finally, my request format reached to server. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. The server takes the request. The server takes the request, and uh, it will. It is going to take. It is based on the request. Respect to web application would be called by the server. Here, what is my web application inside my uh, URL pattern? What is my web application name? ICIC Net Banking. 
ICIC net banking web app. So inside server, okay. you may deploy multiple web applications. Here, ICIC net banking web app. Somebody is going to deploy ICIC pockets web pockets app. ICIC uh, some other application. Like that, I am going to deploy yeah. different applications. But how server knows to which application I need to transfer my request based on URL pattern, it is going to know. That was available in this request format, right? So based on this yeah. request format, respect to web application was called first. So finally, my web application was recognized. Finally, after successful recognized, after successful uh, uh, finding of the particular web application by the server, immediately it is going to read web.xml file. It is going to read mm. each and every entry in web.xml file. Server is going to do all these things default default. So server is going to read all the entries in web.xml file, and it is going to search for the respective URL pattern what you are sending from front end. So after web application, what is the URL pattern I am mentioning here? Slash login. Slash login. So it is going to search each and every entry. It is going to read each and every entry in web.xml file. So is there any entry with URL pattern slash login? Yes. Yes. Slash login was available. So if it was available, so it was mapped with which class? With the servlet class? Login servlet. Login servlet. So based on your URL pattern, respect to servlet would be recognized first. Okay. Finally, my servlet was recognized. Immediately, immediately, your servlet was loaded. That is called as servlet loading. After that, after that, for your servlet object was created. That is called as servlet instantiation. Servlet instantiation. After that, your servlet would be initialized by calling init method. By calling init method, your servlet would be initialized. That is called as servlet initialization. At this servlet initialization, one object was created that is called as servlet config object. Okay? Okay? Mm -hmm. So, after servlet config object was created, immediately your service method was called. Already object was created for your servlet, right? So, what your servlet object is? Mm -hmm. The service method that is do get method so immediately your do get method was called so but your do get method is expecting two parameters what are those two parameters request and response request and response so immediately request object and response objects are going to create so what this request object is having this request object is having all the front end details all all the request details whatever you are sending from your browser all the request details would be stored in this request object. So inside this do get method, I'm going to get all my request data. I will process that request and I will generate some response and that response would be saved. That response would be saved in response object. Okay. Hello. 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 Hello? 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 Yes, Navin. Yes. Finally, my dynamic response was stored in which object? Response. Hello. Response object. So after that, the same response object response. would be forwarded yeah. to server. The same response object would be shared, shared to server. Forwarded mm -hmm. to server. Server takes that response and uh, the server prepares one more response format which is having header and body. This body is having whatever the response you are sending and same response would be traveled. Again, the proto one socket connection would be established at starting, right? The socket connection established, right? Hello? One socket connection established at starting right between your browser and the server. Am I right or not? One connection established right? Yes. Through that same connection, this response format also going to travel up to your browser. Finally, that response would be reached to server and sorry. Finally, that response would be reached to browser and uh, that response would be printed in your browser. That response would be printed in your browser. This is what happening. This is what happening actually, guys. Okay. Hello. Hello. 
ओनली But this entire structure nobody will explain. So even you didn't get this data from Google as well. So try to go with uh, again yeah. and again. Try to share this information. Try to share this uh, research information to your friends and colleagues as well. Because nobody will know this. Yeah. Okay. So can sure you explain, knowing, yeah. can you explain this life cycle? Yeah, Navin. Yes. Thank you. Yes. start now uh like from any browser mm -hmm. we just requested for uh, internet uh, icic net banking mm -hmm. that based on your request his socket connection would be established between your browser and server first yeah yes after that yeah so therefore is a request request form is format is in a two part like header and body header contain all the browser detail and body contain the exact like uh, h uh, url and what, what we our, need what to you are sending from front end go through for right so that's yeah and from this socket another uh, request form is created like header and body no, they all go to the no. server krishna 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 wait a second wait a second hello and it's go to for a web.xml file and it's check the uh, whether the body part hello krishna wait 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 please no here one more request format is not going to create whatever the request format created that could be traveled that's where that's it not one more was created what my point grishma okay yeah 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 one more was yeah. not created whatever created here same it would be travel it's like a train or travel. it's like okay. flight this this socket yeah, is yeah, right yeah. it's like a flight kindly remember it would be travel okay. between your browser okay. and server like a flight it is like a flight so this is like a passenger this request format is like a passenger so here it was not created one more time same would be transferred that's it okay hello hello yes grishma are you okay <sighs> hello 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 yes navin yes it's audible is it audible i can to give you a lot of content today but i don't know too much disturbance He wants to finish life cycle, and the next one more beautiful application is there. What I prepared previously, that application wants to share it. Okay, so can you can, after that? After that, so finally my request format was reached to server. After that, what happened? Hello. Hello. Yes, Navin. Yes, is it audible? Yes, Navin. Yes. Yes. Finally, my request format reached to server. After that, what happened? Yeah, and then it's go for go to the web dot xml file. No, after that, server to respect to web application first. 
inside your server so many web applications are there right like i says in net banking yeah so first request goes to application first respect to web application okay okay after that yeah and then it's go to like a web.xml file mm -hmm. and then it's uh, search for a pattern url pattern mm -hmm. if there is available it's go to that uh, like a uh, particular what the uh, requested pattern is there it's a finding that so uh, so it is available or not mm -hmm. like login server mm -hmm. yeah and in and from there that server would be loading mm -hmm. and then it's uh, like uh, and then it's go to from there instantiation server Solid instantiation means for that loaded solid object was created. You mean to say? Created, yeah. Okay. After that, uh, and then in from object it created, then init method is called. Okay, great. Yeah, and from that, uh, and again it's good. No, not at again. And afterwards is go to for do get method. No, after it's after yeah, whenever init method call, one object was created. What is that? Yeah, no. Select configuration. Yes, select config. Select config object was created. Config, that is important yeah. uh, point. Yes. Yeah. After that. After that, it's go a uh, next uh, like go to mat method. Uh huh. Your do get method is going to and, call. Sorry, do get method and do get method has two parameters: mm -hmm. request and response. Uh mm huh. -hmm. So request method, it's it's contain like all the requests of front end data. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And from that response will be generated and response go to the ser uh, server mm -hmm. and that its header and body will be created and from that uh, it's go to the what we can say for is that like uh, again response format would be created you mean to say yeah okay in two part like header and body mm -hmm. hello yes 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 i'm hearing hello 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 yes i mean i'm right yes yes i'm hearing tell me yeah and the response format is created like there is two part header and body mm -hmm. and that response go through the like uh, our browser okay finally your response would be displayed in your browser you mean to say yeah yes. yeah so this is what going to happen in builtly between your request and response okay hope everyone okay so after getting the response whatever the objects created all would be deinitialized by calling this type method that you forgot actually Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And one more thing. Yeah. I forgot to tell you one. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot to tell you one more point. One more point. So, according to steps, you develop your application. You are going to deploy yeah. your web application right in server. You are going to deploy your web application in server right. Mm -hmm. So at this time, whenever you deploy the web application in server, at this time an object was created. That object is called as servlet context object. servlet context object so at which time the servlet context object was created whenever you deploy your web application at that particular time servlet context object was created this is only single object for entire web application so you are deploying here ics in net banking web app so for this entire application this uh, single co context object was created by the container by the server okay servlet context object yeah So when servlet context object was created, when servlet context object was created, friends, at the time of your web application deployment, whenever you deploy web application in server, at that time the servlet context object was created. Okay. Hello. Hope you are okay, everyone. Yes. 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 So any yeah. questions up to now? Any queries up to now? This entire life cycle. No, no, no. Yes. Hope you are okay. 
Yes. What about others? Okay. Hope everyone okay. Yes. So try to go with it again. So we'll send you this uh, uh, now itself. Try to go with it and uh, try to practice my first web application. What I shared in my link. So from today onwards, everything will share in link itself. Not going to share in mail because my mail I don't have enough uh, uh, like memory. So we'll share you everything in drive. So try to go with it. Try to download it and try to practice. Okay. Hello. Hmm. Okay, Grishma. Yes, Navin. Yes, fine. See you back in next session. I'm getting huge yeah, sure, questions Navin. today. Yes. Okay, Navin. Yes. Sorry.